So, I told Darren all about me, my channel, my background, and what I hope to do in the future. And I learned a lot about Darren too. He said, you know what, we would like to do something with you. You've got an interesting story, and I really like the sound of what you're planning. I'm not promising anything, but let's get your ceramic coating done, then we'll sit down and see. But we want to be part of your journey. It was quite a shock for me. Um, I was hoping at most to request Darren to subscribe to the channel, um, but I'd never really expected more. We had spoken earlier on the phone and when I went to pay a deposit, but I wasn't really sure if anything would come of it. Perhaps he would change his mind after seeing that I'm a newbie, I've not got the fanciest of bikes, I'm a skilled rider. But I also really questioned if I was good enough or I deserved a potential sponsor on my journey. Because there were so many amazing channels out there and there were so many people who really worked so hard I'd only started this idea of Queen Peaks Biker in April 2020 and I mean I've got no great expertise um, I was learning how to edit on in every video I had no vast knowledge or experience with bikes and worst of all I was new to all this when uh, I asked what I was doing with my channel I simply said I'm charting my journey I'm a middle-aged newbie who wants to fulfill his dream of going around the world but has responsibilities. I do have a knack for getting into trouble when you're in dodgy situations. In the end, I concluded five points. Number one, my journey is mine and unique to me. I'm in competition with no one except myself. I do it to motivate myself and take a page from Sam Manikin's book. As he told everyone in the pub he was going around the world later realised he couldn't back out and had to get, even had to get his licence. A few weeks later he was standing on the edge of the Sahara thinking, Sam, what have you done? It should be real, I think. Um, if knowing nothing is, so be it. Um, I'm learning and growing and this is good uh, for me, looking back in the future. Um, so my wife can tell me all the things I've done wrong with video references, so be it. Um, I hope others can accept it's okay to be in this position and uh, learn from the other people around them um, not to feel stupid or inadequate for not knowing more and I think that's a good thing to state and it's a good thing to go for um, so it should chart me for good or worse and that's sufficient number three why am I putting myself through this am I too old I've got too much to do I have no time for trikes travel all these crazy daydreams but that's why I have to do it. That is my reality. But all I can ever do is try. I don't have all the answers and maybe I don't get too far and I'd rather fail than not try at all. Isn't it the point of our lives to keep trying to fulfill the things that we have in our head? For some, it's 2.4 children. For others, it's worldly belongings. For others, it's conquest. But for a curious one like me, um, it's having the answers and knowing the better question to ask. I hope I can show that people like me getting on in age um, and that one day stop and wonder, where did all those years go? How did I get here and who am I today? So many give up their life to their families and others at the cost of their own dreams and hopes. They take up the responsibility and fulfil those responsibilities as best they can. And one day we question, how many days have I got left? Is it okay to keep going like this? For many, many people, this will never come and they are happy. And I suppose they're the lucky ones. For someone like me, it gnaws away at you. And I don't see any end in sight.
how to get out and make a change. I've made so many mistakes and I have so many regrets but what I have learned is that while I don't know about tomorrow but I know that I'm here today and today is what I choose to act upon. How many times have we said no without thinking and then spent a lifetime of regret and reflecting how grave a mistake that was. I don't want to wake up one day and realise it's too late. It's closer than one thinks. Five, I need to tell my story. I need to prove it, not just with fragile paper words, but with action and evidence. Mary Seaver, or Mary with a Bantam, went around the world in the 1960s and was the first British woman to travel the world by bike. No one knew until she stood up and told her story. What does this all mean? Well, there were a number of things for me to consider. If I was right for Supreme Coat, and if Supreme Coat were right to sponsor for me, and if sponsorship was the right step, my responsibilities. The way that I feel is that it is a responsibility to have Supreme Coat on board. I'm representing a brand, a business, livelihoods of many people, and something that many have put a lifetime of work into. Imagine putting your name behind essentially a stranger. To me, it's a great privilege and honour. But I also do feel a weight uh, that I need to avoid the tomfoolery and shenanigans lest it tarnish the name of Supreme Court. No pun intended there. It's important to me that I don't negatively impact them in, in any way and I should be the best representative I can be. However, there is another side. If I'm going to join my name with a brand and be their representative, it was important that I'm extremely careful not to damage myself by associating myself or with a product that could harm myself or have a negative impact upon anyone that I recommend it to. Here I was very cautious and this is part of the telephone calls and meetings that I had with Darren were all part of this vetting process. By nature I like to think that I'm careful and considered with important decisions like this and I found Darren a person I can work with. With a product he truly believes in and having coated two motorbikes with him that I've thoroughly tested, I was extremely impressed. The more I used the Alp, the more confidence I gained that it had really made a difference. And the product I trusted with over six months of testing and trial, I felt very positive and I was more than happy with the product. Is sponsorship the right step? This was the most difficult question to answer. Did I want to have the added responsibility that being sponsored brings? The question was that what did Supreme Coat want from me? What were the expectations? What did they want for me in return? Ultimately, I think these are things that measure, for me are measuring red lines. And they were. I wouldn't be stopped or hampered with what I wanted to do or where I wanted to go. That wasn't really an issue, was it? The next point, I would say what I found with the product and I wouldn't take any direction whatsoever. Again, I didn't think that was an issue. They wanted me to be fair and independent and they want to improve their product and get better and better. So again, second point didn't matter either. I could not carry out daily, weekly or continuous advertising them non-stop via the channel. But I've never actually been asked to do anything of the sort. I do a post when something relevant happens. So again, no issues. I would need to test their product as far as I could and if there was an issue I would report it. But I would imagine this would be the ultimate test and evidence of the integrity of the product and the process. To be honest, the only thing that really made me stop and think was that I would be an ambassador for a brand and I would need to try and stay sensible as a representative. I didn't want to see myself feeling um, obliged and to constantly talk about Supreme Coat and try and sell it to everyone I met. 
in the end I concluded that I really did be generally believe in the product and I was very happy with the coating and the team and in the end I felt that I should do what I could when I, when I was able to help when possible and appropriate. There were several positives to actually being sponsored for me. It did lend me legitimacy, my channel and my journey. Having a company behind me did make it seem more real. I wasn't just another crackpot. It was also the kudos of having someone there, saying I had a sponsor that added prestige or made me feel more positive about the whole endeavour. Because before, a lot of times I would stop and think, what are you doing? Why <laughs> Does anyone even care? So it's also given me a sense of satisfaction, an affirmation or confidence boost that someone believed in me to a point that where I would put their money where their mouth is. What I was planning wasn't stupid or this whole thing was a dumb idea. It has really supported and boosted me. Well, I wasn't really going to share this story, but uh, I'll put into context why this has been so important to me. After Scotland in September 2021, I went to a garage to request a quote for some work I wanted done. I was told by the mechanic that he was a very experienced mechanic and he'd been in the rally world his whole life. And he simply laughed in my face when I told him it was my dream to go around the world and that's what I was trying to do. And that's why I wanted these specific things done on the bike. He then proceeded to tell me that my bike would, that I would never do it, even though countless trans alps had already done it. Um, I was going to get myself killed and I, and I had no clue, whilst he knew nothing about me, what I was doing and that I was delusional. The only chance that I had was partnering up with him and that he would charge for it for me, no doubt. When he asked the, the routes and what my ideas and plans were, I told him. And another member of staff laughed in my face and waved at me saying bye bye. Better dead than smeg, I thought. The reason I'm sharing the story is twofold. Firstly, there are people who think they know better than you and that everyone else is incompetent and stupid. These people make themselves feel better by bringing other people down. Oh yes, and I did find an excellent garage nearby to the work and most of it's been completed by a really nice and positive chap. My experience so far has been very good and he has been very nice, fair and kind and can't do enough to help. Those are the people who I want around me. Those who want to do better themselves and have it in themselves to help others around them. So, is sponsorship the right step? Yes, I think in this case, having the ear of someone that I can give feedback to and it could be used to improve the product is ideal. It works for me as I like the people involved and the product is fantastic. I know I have shortcomings and I am under no illusion I have a lot of work to do. I am trying my best to overcome and grow. The best thing I can do is have positive, knowledgeable and kind people around me that can also support and nurture and I can grow with. But yes, I think at this time this is the right company, the right people and it would be the right positive step. What will I get from Supreme Code? The trip and all I will do at the moment will be funded by me. Supreme Code is still a growing business and I appreciate whatever they will offer, be it a ticket, booking room or coating to my updated equipment. I'm under no expectations really at all that I will receive any vast sums but my aim is to travel and in this case being an experienced budget traveller having backpacked for many years extensively. I understand it's more important to cultivate good long-term relationship than have short-term gains. If I'm able to have additional guidance or Supreme Code is able to offer some help or support is worth its weight in gold. What I do get is a reliable and dependable partner, someone who understands and in cases where nothing can be offered except a sympathetic shoulder or moral support that is most valuable. It's my journey and therefore my responsibility to make the effort to get myself out there and do what I need to do. Where are we today? Well, I'm really happy to be officially partnered with Supreme Code, but everything aside, I really feel lucky that I'm in this position or in the process of doing what I set out to do, to see the world in small, manageable chunks. However long it takes, it takes, and I'm in no rush. I want to enjoy 
and Cork's treasure every moment. I'm so excited and can't wait for the future and what is to come. In the next part, part three, there will be an interview, all the questions that you ask and hopefully they'll answer everything you've always wanted to know and ceramic coating. Thank you for listening, take care, ride safe and stay curious.